So far, while talking about the limit, we have been pretty informal. We were saying like things like get closer to and gets close enough. Um, and really, uh, mathematicians aren't particularly fond of things that are loose language like that. They like things well-defined. So we're going to uh, get a little mathy in this section and, and try and get formal about really defining what a limit is in a way that's, that's rigorous. So let's take a, a function. Pretty straightforward little compound function. So this is um, when x is not equal to 3, f of x is this line. But when x is equal to 3, uh, I'm not f of x is this line, f of x is 6. So if you think about like a graph of this, uh, you know, y-intercept to negative 1, slope of 2. So it goes on its merry way for a while. And let's put 3 right about here. And what happens at 3? If I plug 3 into here, 2 times 3 minus 1, that's actually 5. So it looks like this. So when x isn't 3, it's everything on this line. But when x is 3, that should be straight. Pretend like it is. No, let's not pretend. I'll... There, now you can pretend like it is. But when x is equal to 3, we actually have a little, a little jump here. So it's actually 6. So we know if I asked you what is f of 3, that's this case. When x equals 3, this thing is 6. But when f is anything else, it's you know evaluated in this. But we could talk about the limit of this as x approaches 3. That's not 6, right? The limit, as we squeeze in on this, the limit of this is 5. And again, there's that loose language as we squeeze in on it, as we get close to it. Well, how close? That becomes kind of an important question when we get real formal about the definition of a limit. How close? And as I get closer, can you show me that it actually is getting the, to the closer to the input, can you show me that it actually is getting closer to that output? So let's ask a question. We should be able to ask this question for any value. Um, so something like this. How close does x have to be to 3 so f of x is within 0.1 of 5? So notice we can, this is like a tolerance question. I'm going to tell you how close I want you to be to that limit. You should be able to tell me what's the range, how close you need to be to the input in order to get that. So that's uh, it's a little game we could, we could play. I'm thinking of a way I could express the distance from x to 3. And that would be, that's kind of what subtraction tells us, x minus 3. I'm going to say the absolute value of that. So notice what that does is that gives me a range in here. Right, x if x is here, x is here. So x minus 3, that tells me not necessarily the distance, right, but the, the length of that little gap in there. And same thing with my outputs. My distance from f of x to 5 is that. So that's like this distance here and this distance here. Now, we, we actually have names for these distances. Uh, the, the, the symbol that we typically use for this distance for the inputs is a delta, lowercase delta. So the question we're asking now is this. If the distance from the outputs is less than 0.1, then what is the distance for the, uh, for the inputs? So the question is, again, in order to make this tolerance 0.1, like this is no further out than 0.1, what does this have to be to make that happen? Well, I know what f of x is. f of x um, is 2x minus 1. I don't have to worry about the 6 part because that's where I'm evaluating the limit. And let me manipulate this, do a little arithmetic. 2x minus 6. Oh, I notice I can factor a 2 out. All right, and this is convenient, and this is what happens for us. Um, in, in many cases. I, c I can do some manipulation to this to see a version of that in it. So I know that 2 times this has to be less than 0.1. So if I divide both sides by 2 here, I know that 
x minus 3 has to be less than uh, 0 0.1 divided by 5. Oh, sorry, divided by 2. 0 0.05. So what I know then is my delta is less than 0 0.05. So in other words, on this graph, I'm going to redraw it. Here's 3. If I pick something that's less than 0 0.05 away from 3, I can guarantee that my output will be within 0.1 of, uh, what was it, 5. And now, if that's not close enough to you, fine. Change, change this value. Right, like if this is, if you make this a, a 0.01, it's the same thing. It's just going to be 0.01 divided by 2. Like no matter how close you tell me you want this output tolerance to be, I can make that input tolerance smaller and it's guaranteed to fit within there. That's much more formal than getting close enough. Okay, I'm going to formalize this a little bit more. <laughs> so I made a little hand waving argument that you could change this number to whatever you want. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do that uh, symbolically. So if this tolerance, this range for the outputs is less than, and now I use an epsilon for that. So that one's an epsilon and that's a delta. This is often called an epsilon delta definition for limit because those are the, those are the symbols that we, that we use. So notice epsilon is our tolerance for the outputs. And delta is our tolerance for the inputs. So if this is true, then that is true. And now it's just basically the same steps as this, right? So I, I plugged in the 2x minus 1 here. I manipulated this. Divided by 2. Then I said, well, here's my absolute value of x minus 3. Here's my tolerance for the inputs. So I know that delta must be epsilon over 2. Again, epsilon is that tolerance for the outputs. How close do you want it to be to the, uh, to the limit? So if you tell me it has to be within epsilon, if I cut that in half, I can guarantee I'm within that tolerance by some delta value. And notice as you make epsilon smaller, I divide it by 2, I'm making delta smaller as well. Right, as epsilon gets smaller, delta gets smaller. So that you can see right there that if this isn't small enough, um, you can make that smaller. I know how to make this smaller enough to know that it's within the tolerance that you want it to be. And then if you accept that you can let things run to infinity, that limit kind of falls out from there. Again, I want to emphasize, this is kind of simple and tense, um, but it's, it's a very rigorous definition. And it's here to really get formal about the idea of limit. So we're not hand waving and saying things like, oh, close enough. So here's our formal definition of a limit. Uh, we can say uh, the limit as x approaches a of f of x equals l. l is the limit, f is the function, a is the point we're approaching towards. Um, notice that I didn't write down some assumptions here. Uh, f actually uh, has a limit, right? The limit actually exists. Uh, f is actually a function, things like that. Um, so com some compound if statements here. If for every epsilon greater than zero, so for every output tolerance, there exists a delta greater than zero doop, input tolerance such that if the distance between x and a, right, where you're at and where you want to be, that distance, I'm going to call that the input distance. If the is input distance is within the tolerance, less than the tolerance, then the output distance is within its output tolerance. So in other words, <laughs> close enough, right? Like if for everything that's a output tolerance. So if you you if we know that this exists, we know that that exists. And they're within their tolerances. It's a real formal way of saying close enough and close enough 
forever. I'm going to draw a picture that, that, that might actually get at this a little bit as well. Okay, so um, not every function is a straight line. Not every limit does not exist, but I'm just drawing this for simplicity for the, for the sketch. So um, what I'm saying is if you, here's this function, here's A, so we're going to approach A from both sides, and that'll give us the limit. That's a decent picture of that. Uh, who knows what the actual shape of the function is, blah, blah, blah. So if for every output tolerance, epsilon. So this, I have this range epsilon, right? Like this distance in here is epsilon. So this spot would he, up here would be the limit plus epsilon. And this spot right here would be the limit minus epsilon, right? Like within epsilon of it. That's that part right there. Epsilon greater than zero. There exists a delta greater than zero. So I have some distance delta. So if that distance is delta, this is a plus delta. And this is a minus delta right the actual value right if that's five and that's two it goes out to seven back to three so if you tell me again if we have some tolerance that we want this to be within we can find the tolerance that this has to be within and it exists for every every value of epsilon that you give me another way we could say this Again, this formal definition is saying the distance between L uh, and f of x, the function, can be made arbitrarily small by making the distance from x to a sufficiently small. Notice that language. That language is beautiful. Arbitrarily small, as small as you want it to be, by making delta sufficiently small. Again, Small enough is good enough. So what I'd like to do now is uh, get at some kind of some graph pictures of these. So here's a function right here. And I want my, uh, my epsilon, my output tolerance to be one. So if I kind of uh, formalize what I'm, what I'm asking here, I'm telling you that um, I want to find the delta around that input for, right? So I want to find this tolerance if the output tolerance, right? Because it sure looks like the limit is two, is less than one, this delta value. So if that delta value is one, that means I'd go one away from two in both directions. So to here and to here. So on this function, if I go one in this direction, notice how that associates with this input value of six. And if I go one in this direction, that uh, associates with this input value of one. So it's lopsided because the, the function isn't uh, like symmetrical across that, across that input four. Now I need my tolerance to take into case like both cases. So I need it small enough so it fits within both. So if I go, you know how this distance is three right here. If I go three, that kicks me out to seven. I'm no longer within my tolerance for inputs. So I'm going to take the smaller of the two distances, so two. So notice then um, that if I choose two, that is small enough so that all of these outputs are within that output region. Again, if you give me an epsilon, I can give you a delta. So let's take a look at this graph. The language here, uh, notice we have some function. It looks like the limit as x approaches two is five. So I would say uh, epsilon is one. We want this distance, this tolerance to be one. So if that's the case, we wanna find what's this tolerance that keeps us within one for the outputs. 
So I'm going to erase a little bit. So I was given my epsilon. It's 1. So this goes out to here and back to here. So if I pull this down, see now this is going to be, in this case, I can't really tell it from the graph really well. Looks like this side shorter. I don't know, you know, it might be 0.2, it might be 0.3. Since it's a graph and I'm eyeballing it, I'm going to I'm going to be like really conservative. I'm going to say that's that can't be bigger than 0.2. So I'm going to say delta it, as long as I make delta uh 0.2. As long as this is less than 0.2, I'm within the tolerance. And if I wasn't comfortable with that, I'll just say since I'm eyeballing it, I can't get the value exact. I'll say 0.1, right? So notice on the graph, what we're doing is we're considering this value in here and we're going, what's the shortest distance in here? What's the, the least I can, what's the, actually, what's the most I can make this and have it be so that this range will fall inside those outputs. So there's that idea as a graph, but, um, you know, we have some algebra manipulation we can do as well. So let's see what that, what some implications for that are. Is let's uh, prove that the, the limit as x approaches 3 of 4x minus 5. First off, let's convince ourselves that it is. Um, this is a straight line, so there's not going to be any jumps or gaps in it. So the limit should be easy to just evaluate. If I plug in 3, 4 times 3 is 12. 12 minus 5 8, 9, 10, is 7. Cool. So I, yeah, so I, I believe that it is. So let me prove it. So the question then is, um, from my formal definition, my input distance is less than delta, then my output distance within that tolerance is less than that tolerance epsilon. And so what I need to do now, first thing, is I want to show that there's a relationship between epsilon and delta. And, and we did that kind of with the first one. So I know what the function is. The function is 4x minus 5. So I'm going to put that in here. And the limit is 7. So I'm going to put that in there. Notice I can actually put those values in there. And I'm saying that that has to be less than epsilon. So manipulate this a bit. Uh, 4x minus 12. And I notice I can factor 4 out of that. So uh, 4 times x minus 3, absolute value of x minus 3 is less than epsilon. And there's my x minus 3 right there. So if I divide by 4, I know that I'm going to write this here. x minus 3 has to be less than epsilon divided by 4. And since this is less than delta, this, this might as well be equal to delta. If you give me an epsilon, I can divide it by 4, and I'm in that tolerance, always. And you can see as epsilon gets smaller, delta has to get smaller. So there is, um, there's my first part where I actually find that relationship between epsilon and delta. And so formally, um, I would have to prove it. I would have to show that it actually works. And this feels really redundant, but... That's what rigor is. So given epsilon, I would choose a delta such that epsilon is divided by 4. Um, so I could go back to my original definition. Um, 0 is less than. So notice then um, this right here is less than epsilon. So if delta is epsilon times 4, uh, epsilon divided by 4, epsilon is 4 times delta. So now what I can do is I can say delta, which is 4 epsilons, and if you think about dividing both sides by 4, it shows it back again. And I know that this, like, you do this, and then you, you kind of do the same work again, it feels like, but it has to work both ways. Um, I'm not going to ask you to do any, any proofs like this, but I do want to show you the rigor. Okay, let's get at left-hand and right-hand limits then.
Okay, notice we have the same initial setup. Uh, the limit as x approaches a of f of x is l. If for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero such that, and now I'm going to say, I'm going to start with that same premise and I have a left hand definition and a right hand definition. So the only difference here for the left hand would be would be as x approaches a from the left hand side and the right hand side will be similar. So notice the only difference here is this isn't uh, like universal. It has x is just between a minus delta and a. So if you think about uh, where a is at, a minus delta is the left hand side of it, right? If this is the x-axis. So we're just only subtracting that delta. We're not adding it because we're only coming at it from the left. And on this side, a is less than x, which is less than a minus delta. Same idea, or a plus delta. Uh, sorry. We're getting it from uh, from this side, a a plus delta. We're only getting at it from the right hand side. Just a more formal uh, definition. And then one last piece. Let's get at these infinite limits. And we can know those are things that grow without bound, um, either from one direction, the left or right handed, or from both directions of a full limit. Get this definition up here. So infinite limits, a lot of words here, but basically what we've done is um, instead of having this epsilon delta for our for our tolerance, we just have a number m. So notice that uh, the limit of f of x as x approaches a of infinity for any positive number you give me, that's an output, there's a delta, a positive delta, such that here's my delta range, right? If you give me, if I, you give me an M, if you give me an output, I can give you a delta that makes F of X bigger than M. In other words, you give me an output, I can give you an input tolerance that makes my function bigger than M. So now instead of narrowing down those, those um, outputs, it's expanding it, right? I'm just saying this, the, I, you give, I can make my function bigger than any limit you give me. It grows without bound. And the negative definition it goes the same way, but it just says for any negative number, I can make the function less than that. So no matter what, you give me a you know negative 5,000, I can give you a delta, right? A tolerance for this that will make this function less than that n, heading towards negative infinity. All right, um, you're gonna practice doing some stuff with graphs, finding some, um, finding some tolerances given one or the other, usually given the output, you'll find the input. And then also just do some rewriting of functions. Like the first part is I give you this with real specific values. You just rewrite it. You don't have to do anything with it. I don't think on those first problems. Okay. Don't forget to message me with questions, post them in the forums and uh, have fun with this.